I wasn't looking for fireworks, and I didn't need the earth to move. I just wanted to meet someone I like who would, hopefully, like me back. Maybe my expectations were too low, but I'd given up on the idea of a fairy tale a long time ago. That night wasn't about that. That night was about a lonely single mom who loved her daughter more than anything in the world, but who, quite frankly, didn't want to be alone anymore. So you go into the loneliness yes. of a single mother yes. and what that's like. Have you ever been alone? Because I think it's different being, being alone than being lonely. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think that as we grow up, mm -hmm. we realize that. The younger you are, the more you equate the two. Um, but I felt like primarily telling the story of a single mom allowed me to go to those places because as a parent, you realize your life changes and it's no longer about you. And so at the end of the day, for a single person without kids, you have all kinds of possibilities. Mm -hmm. For a parent, your day when the kids go to sleep, you got, you're doing some more work. Because you're either reading a book, you're doing more work, you're cleaning the house, you're watching TV, but you are trapped in that environment. That's you right. cannot escape until the next morning when the kids go to school or whatever, what have you. But then you have to go to work. And so that cycle starts to repeat itself. And I just felt like for a single mom, that could wear on you to the point where you might make some really interesting decisions about what to do with yourself. And, and that's, that's great for storytelling. And just when you think about it, she just has one baby. Yeah. What about the single mothers or the widowed mothers that have multiple children? Absolutely. My mother was, God rest her soul, was 30 years old with six children when my father dropped dead at 31. And she never remarried because she said, if I decide to kill up one of y'all, I'm going to kill all of y'all and I'm going to be sitting in a mental institution. <laughs> oh, she had her whole plan out. and. I know that the life that she led raising the six of us was not the life that she wanted. Absolutely. But she wanted to make sure we would have that choice. And I think as young people, my, I, my, my parents were divorced as well. <laughs> so my mother raised the three of us, just us, by herself. It never dawned on me until I was an adult that as much as she worked hard, provided for us, gave us all the things that she needed, she had no time for a personal life. Mm -mm. That wasn't there. Mm -mm. I, now, as a kid, I don't. I mean, that doesn't register right. with me, right? Because you want mom. you you want your mom all to yourself. Exactly. So that's good for me. I don't want. But looking back, I can't imagine all those nights going to sleep and just being by yourself without any sort of adult interaction, mm -hmm. um, and the sacrifice that she made, and a silent sacrifice. She never complained. They, because they don't complain. Yeah. They they just they just buck up and they just, just do, do it. What you gotta do. I remember when we were teenagers and we were all teenagers together oh, wow. because there's a seven year difference between my older sister and my younger sister. And I remember one day we were I think three of us were graduating from school, two from junior high, me and my sister from high school. My mother sat on the edge of the bed. She said I have not washed my behind, I have not went to the bathroom, and I have spent $600 and have not even walked out this bedroom. What kind of party is this? <laughs> and I thought, this woman done doled out $600 to, for different things, and she hasn't, you know, she, she, she doesn't do anything for herself. And my mother never wore slacks. So she always wore pantyhose and she always wore, you know, skirts and dresses to her job. Sure. And I was always like, Mom, don't wear them pantyhose anymore. She goes, baby, I can't afford no more pantyhose. And she would wear stockings. And when I started working at 14, that's the one thing I did for my mother all the time. I'd buy her a dozen pair of pantyhose so she did not have to wear them till they fell off her leg. And you'd have thought I gave her a million dollars. Oh, yeah. You know, and they don't complain. And that's what we need. We need strong mothers. People think just because you have a baby, that makes you a parent. No, that makes you a mama or a daddy. It takes something to be a parent. Absolutely. What kind of parent are you? I try to be the best one I can be. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm fortunate because my daughter's a much better child than I am a father, so. Now, I'm, how can that be when she's only seven? Well, you know, I'm an artist, so I have my moods. Okay. Oh. I was blessed with a daughter who's the happiest kid on earth and who's very, very sharp. She's mm -hmm. smart. 
And so she reads my moods and, and you know, we just have a great relationship. And she's like, Daddy crazy. Okay, let me go in the room. Yeah. See, my son would, when I would get like that, my son would say, um, Daddy, you want to go in there and talk to your wife? <laughs> oh, oh, not I'm his wife. I'm not your mother. No, you the crazy lady right now today. What do you want your legacy to be? Wow. That I made a difference. You are making a difference because you give strong black women a voice and a creative voice. And they don't have to be hoes and skanks and they can be smart and they can be politically astute and they can be strong women. Well, and you know why? God, I know why God made you a strong black man. Why is that? Because he knew you could handle it. Well, there you go. Timothy Allen Smith, tell people how they can get a copy of Regret and Captive and Choice and where they can get tickets for <laughs> Love Jones the Musical. Easiest, easiest pie. Amazon.com. Everything I've written is available on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Um, and Love Jones, the And that it's coming to LA pretty soon. November 5th and 6th in Los Angeles. Oh, how about that? It has been my pleasure to Thank see you, so you again. And to, I'm going to, you know, that I'm going to be all into this one. I hope you enjoy it. It may the universe continue to open up and conspire for your great success. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. And remember, babies, no matter how big or tall, short or small, thick or thin, it matters not what skin you're in. Everybody needs some other love now and then. Peace, babies.